in America. President Biden, my pet Biden, was just on TV saying that the two biggest problems in America are white supremacy and systemic racism. Well, I don't know how we, those are two things. Aren't those the same thing? But systemic racism implies a Lebanese person can't get a job or a Japanese Puerto Rican is not invited. The only thing that Ryan Rivera, Katsu Rivera is not invited to is a Klan rally. And no one goes to those. What are we talking about here? So everyone's white, almost. Kamala Harris, like what's not white about her? Her skin tone, was she not invited to a dinner party at some point? No. Obama, he's white. Everyone is fucking white, okay? Now, there is a group who can complain, and we'll get to them at the end. But let's just start out with whites. Um, I was at, uh, we had our, our security system installed for the, the, uh, the office, and... Uh, the, one of our tech guys, our main tech guy, is, a, is a, an a, a Indian, an Aboriginal, a, a Biloxi something. He's got some stupid tribal name I wasn't familiar with. And, and then there was Ryan, the Puerto, half Puerto Rican, and they were both very late. And I was saying to the guy, joking around, as Ryan showed up, I go, don't work with these people. You don't want to work with Indians or Puerto Ricans. You want to work with white guys like you. Like, what are you, Italian-American? He goes, I'm not white, actually. And I went, oh, he has blue eyes. And he goes, I'm Native American. And I go, no, you're not. And he goes, yeah, I am. I'm whatever the fuck it was, Cherokee or something. And he says, um, yeah, look, like, look at our tone. Look at our tone. And he puts his arm next to mine, the same exact arm. His was slightly less hairy. And uh, I go, what percentage are you Native American? He goes, 4%. I mean, not very much. I wish it was more. I wish it was more. You're white. Now, the argument I have for him being white is the same as Kamala and Obama. You know, they grew up white. Everything about their background is white. They don't know that when you go to the bodega in the hood and you order chicken, you get it with salt and pepper and ketchup. They don't know that because they don't know the culture. Now, there's other cultures like Jews that are white and slightly different, but that's like Amish and other stuff. Kamala Harris, Lebanese guys, Amish. Anyway, I'm going to get all, all into this, but let's start with number one. Whites, all right? 1A, normal whites. Everyone hates these people. Have you got the video, Ryan, pulled up for 1A? Everyone hates these people. They're known as the worst. Look, they bump their heads and stuff. This, this is the systemic racism that Biden was talking about. This guy, she's evil, he's evil, he sucks. I uh, have known these people all my life. They seem pretty cool. They've invented almost everything. And they're the least racist people I've ever met, which is odd, because they're known as the most racist people in the world. In fact, uh, that what, what's her name? Robin Omid, whatever her name is there, the, the chick who writes all those uh, racist books about white fragility. What's her name again? Robin Taylor? Anyway, she's like, yeah, yeah, I know they don't seem racist, but they are. Like them, the way they play basketball there is racist. That's, that paint is racist. They find out racist shit about you. Robin D'Angelo? Yeah, that's it. The other type of main whites are 1B. Those are called rednecks. Now, everyone hates those, them as much as the white people I just showed you now. Uh, the difference is that these white people don't give a shit, which makes them much more admirable in my books. Uh, yeah, these guys. So they're despised. They're actually despised by the first group of whites. This is, there's a lot of, what you're going to see in all of this is a lot of self-hating. A lot of self-hatred. So these awesome whites don't give a shit. Um, now we get into white. The rest of these categories of whites, by the way, are whites that aren't hated. And they tend to not look as white as the original whites. I Parents get harassed because I made a racist joke. Who's the oppressed and who's the oppressor here? If you can get someone fired and cancel their life and terrorize their family, you're the oppressor. You're the one with the power, I'm afraid. You're experiencing white privilege, but it's black white privilege. It's liberal white privilege. It's Asian white privilege. There's a lot of white privilege going on in America, but it's whites don't get to use it for some reason. It's like the force. It's this magical thing that only non-Jedis can touch. So if you're a normal white MAGA middle class white dude like the Covington Catholic schoolboys, you can't take advantage of white privilege. If you're Obama and you grew up white and there's nothing black about you, you can indulge in white privilege. Kamala Harris, who grew up white, and there's nothing black about her, she can engage in white privilege. 
I was talking about this yesterday about how basically everyone you know is white, no matter what they are. They're white. They experience a white life, and they, if they don't look white or they're not white conservatives, then they get white privilege. This is only untrue of basically ghetto blacks. But then I was thinking, wait a minute, I'm saying Kamala Harris is not black because she never did anything, anything black. If Denzel Washington moves into their neighborhood, if his kids go to their school, they pee their pants with excitement. Kamala Harris, look at her there, I'm not sure where to stand. Kamala Harris, her father uh, came from plantation uh, slave owners in Jamaica, her black father. Uh, her mother was a very successful Indian oncologist. Her formative years were spent in Montreal, Canada. No one has ever turned their nose up at Kamala Harris because she is quote unquote brown. God, I hate that fucking term. She's white. This is a white woman. Culturally, her mother probably has an accent and has a bindi. Her mother has, you, you might be able to argue her mother's a different race, but not really. But Kamala Harris, our first female black VP, our first black VP, no, she's white. And this, uh, what's his name? Ali Alexander would talk about that when he'd say, he'd bring up um, uh, cultural things that she knows nothing about. So in a way, she's in blackface when she gets up there and she talks about the black experience and she lied and said, oh, I was listening to Tupac and Eminem when I was in college. No, you weren't. They were 17 at the time, you stupid lying bitch. So she's co-opting black culture and making it her own to impress people like that shit chests boomer angry woman liberals they love that shit they don't actually like real blacks they like these kind of blacks white blacks which are 1g or here's another example of a, a white black remember this guy this is white privilege um this guy is a very popular it's the same category dude the daily beast link this guy is a very uh, successful black actor. He's the guy in Blackish. He kind of represents white blacks in general. And that's kind of the joke of Blackish, uh, that these blacks don't seem very black. And they're not, they're white. Look at his weird mouth just showing his lower teeth. That's a kind of a, like a stegosaurus, I think, does that? Uh, Blackish star Anthony Anderson's disturbing history of sexual assault allegations. You'd think this would cancel him, and it would if it was me. Actually, I'm already canceled. <laughs> it would if it was. Le, uh, Michael Sarah. Um, but this guy just keeps grabbing asses, honking boobs, tuning in Tokyo, and getting away with it. It's because of white privilege. He's a white dude. But one thing interesting, though, about blacks is when they're, whether they're white or ghetto black, real black, blackity black, they all have the same politics. They're all woke. They all like the same rap music. It's a very uh, monolithic culture. And you go, oh yeah, what about all the conservative blacks? Conservative blacks don't exist to any statistical degree. I know them all. And it's about 40 guys. Uh, they 99, over 99% of blacks voted for, for Obama when he was running. So it's a very woke culture. And it's funny that the even like the most upper class black person still totally identifies with ghetto black culture and can hang out with them, change his accent a bit and blend. He's non-white about this. I was wrong about the Caucasus Mountains, but like, what is so Indian about Dr. Shiva? He, he has Djibouti every couple weeks. So do I. So the color of his skin, like the, the reason I'm doing this whole setup here, this whole green screen is the, the impetus is he's hated for the color of his skin. That's a lie. A fucking handful of Klansmen might dislike this guy. That they also dislike me. They dislike Germans. They dislike Spaniards. That is statistically irrelevant. As far as reality goes, and when I say reality, I'm talking about like 95% of the population. This guy is just a white guy. So drop it. The other type of whites there are that experience white privilege are, by the way, Dr. Shiva doesn't experience much white privilege because he dares to uh, fraternize with the right and talk about how important free speech is. So if he has a talk in Boston, hundreds of thousands of people show up and march against hate, which is the exact same as having a march against Gargamel from the Smurfs. They were marching against a mythical thing. White Hispanics. This is my favorite white Hispanic, Guillermo del Toro. He's, uh, his nanny wiped his ass his whole life. He's never done his own laundry. He's never taken out the garbage. 
Please tell me what is non-white about this guy. This guy personifies my argument, really. And all he talks about is how he feels less than, right? And I think in Central America, there are the sort of little people that are closely related to the Aztecs. This guy's a conquistador. He's Spanish. He's speaking a European language. Can you we tune into what he's saying right now? Here. Hola, Guillermo. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh... We talked before about like the, all your intentions with the movie and everything. But how okay, forget it. There's one part in that 10-hour diatribe where he talks about this goes out to the people who feel less than, who feel... Dude, you conquered those people. You're Spanish. You speak a European language. You came to Central America, killed all the Indians, the Native Americans. Their DNA is, is very similar to the Cherokees and the Apaches up here. And then you're standing, literally standing on a pulpit talking about oppression. You're the oppressor, you rich cunt. And... You're and white, the more important. The second race in America is Native Americans. My, uh, my mom's mom's 100%. Um, the, the, my wife is white. My kids are 25%. They're white. They have Indian middle names, and they, they can get free college. They get checks from the casino. But I don't know what is Indian about them. Like, they've been to maybe two powwows their entire lives. I want to get them more involved in that stuff. I, I think it's interesting, just like I want them to, you know, go to the, the Highland Games and experience Robbie Burns night and all that stuff. But uh, it's not easy to do. Because what's interesting about this race is that they're either white, like my wife and kids, or they've separated themselves from the country and they're on the res. And when you look at, like, this account, res memes, or you look at in NDN Twitter, hashtag NDN, you realize that like the entire sense of humor, the culture is just totally different from the rest of the country. So it's hard to talk about the racism they endure. By the way, it's very easy to talk about the racism they did endure. You want to go back to as, as early as the 1930s and 40s, you're going to see horrible, disgusting treatment of the Indians. As Pat Buchanan says, our treatment of the Indians is not the type of behavior from whom one would expect uh, followed the Sermon on the Mount or saw it as divine command. So no one's defending that. But as far as this race going uh, today, they've basically separated themselves from the American conversation and self-segregated. So it's hard to talk about how horrible they're treated when they're, they're not on the island anymore. Like, turn that up. I bet we won't get this joke. What? Holy shit. You tried it. Well, that's not a joke. You act like this whenever you're not fucking pregnant. You can fix that. When I first met you, you were fucking eight months pregnant and you didn't act like this. Everything was fine. Everything was good. Who needs cable when you got friends like this? This is why we broke up. All right? Then we break up. You get fucking pregnant. You come back. Everything's good again. And now you're not pregnant. And you're taking off. Turning a goddamn alcoholic. Looking, leaving me with those kids. And now I don't be fucking see you anymore. We have to knock you up to make you fucking behave or what? I gotta keep her pregnant. Just to keep her sober. I told you. I'm gonna give you the girl that okay. you wanted. I know. That reminds me of Gus Weezing humor. That looks like Reservoir. I gotta Trailer get pregnant because it. What'd you say? Trailer Park Boys, but Indian. Yeah, well, it is. It's it's white trash culture in many ways. I mean, Glaswegians are the same. I got to get pregnant. It keeps me sober. <laughs> um, group number three, Asians. Now, when I say Asians, I mean the previous group, the white Asians, is mom and dad. These are the ones you see collecting big things, the cans on their back. Um, the reason I'm doing this is to say systemic racism implies we hate all these other groups, right? We don't. No one hates Indians. They've separated themselves. No one sees them, really, outside of like Arizona and Vancouver, isolated places. You don't really come across American Indians. And with the FOBs, the genuine Asians, they've also self-segregated. Yes, there's a wave of crime against them, but there's a wave of crime against all vulnerable people because crime is up because you dummies defunded the police. So this is a... You can't talk about systemic racism against older Asian people because... Everyone likes them outside of a bunch of fatherless miscreants who are tearing up the entire country and destroying it. I'm still looking for victims of racism. That's what I'm talking about. When I do this list here, I'm trying to isolate the group that can say, you always hated us, you treated us like shit, and you still hate us. And when we talk about systemic racism and white supremacy, this is the group. White supremacists don't hate any of the people I've been talking about yet. 
Number four, we get to Hispanics. Once again, just like the Native Americans, just like the genuine Asians, the fobs, fresh off the boats, the Hispanics have self-segregated. I'm talking about the little illegals, you know, the little tiny guys that are this tall, that drink a lot and drive drunk, and you get them at Home Depot for 100 bucks a day, which isn't cheap, by the way. Everyone says they do, the, they do jobs for $4 an hour. No, you can't really get them for minimum wage. They do like 20 bucks an hour. Or what's 8, 10? Oh, yeah, it's closer to minimum wage. But they don't pay tax on it. So it's actually 20 bucks an hour. The same as if it was on the books. Anyway, these guys, little tiny people, you know, you see this sort of, this sort of plump, shrumpy women walking around with their strollers and no ass and a little burrito butt belly. Uh, that is a different race. I'll give you that. But uh, no one dislikes them. They, they've self-segregated. They're not part of the American conversation. The Dems like to use them and ghetto blacks to, to vote. They pile them on school buses and pay them 100 bucks and get them to the polls. So they're very useful to the DNC, which is why the DNC is pro-open borders. But outside of that one day where they pile them into the voting booths, they're not really part of the American conversation, and that's their choice. You know, you don't have a lot of these tiny little Aztecs pushing to be a pundit on Fox News. The ones who do appear on Fox News and do argue about it are the white Hispanics. And we already... Which brings us to the fifth race in America, and that is actual blacks, real blacks. Now, with abortion, I like to try to... I'm not trying to win the debate. I want to isolate it down to how many weeks are we talking here? I say zero weeks. I say the day of conception. Cuomo and Justin Trudeau say nine months. That's bad. I want to get it down to how about when the baby's viable outside the womb? Now, with the incredible technology we have now, a baby is viable, uh, I think it's 27 weeks now. So let's try to narrow the abortion debate down to this. Exact same thing with races. Let's stop talking about Kamala Harris and Lebanese people and and Chinese kids, like, they're victims of racism. They're not. The KKK, racist people, quote-unquote white supremacists, hate these guys. They hate ghetto blacks. And ghetto blacks have a history here. See, the problem with the little Aztecs who came here, they came here on their own accord very recently. So they can't talk about slavery. They could bitch maybe about Spain killing all their ancestors. That's a thing. But as far as uh, our world, our America today... You just showed up. I can't pop into Japan and start complaining about how people don't treat me like I'm Japanese or I'm not a, I'm not worship. I don't see people like me on TV. You're not allowed to do that when you show up late. So they have, and Ann Coulter points this out to that dude tart on Univision. Uh, they don't have an argument. These guys at least have an argument. Slavery, Jim Crow, great, gotcha. Now, just like with abortion, I don't necessarily agree that these people have a great case because this is how they're behaving, and they're killing 20 of them a day. And if you look at white supremacy, I think on Tucker, they said in four years, they counted 70 deaths linked to white supremacy, less than people who died from lightning strikes. But again, we're just trying to isolate the problem, trying to corral it into one area. And if you want to talk about systemic racism and white supremacy, ghetto blacks, not white blacks, but black blacks, is the only place the argument should exist. Now, once we isolate that, I'd like to say, guys, we lost 620,000 in the Civil War, ending this thing. I'd like a thank you. And you got to stop twerking on an ambulance on Juneteenth when someone has been shot. And you got to stop killing each other to the tune of 20 a day. And you got to stop abandoning your kids and all that stuff. But at least the problem is isolated. So there are only five races in America. Only one of them is really non-white or has an argument about racism. So can we stop? Sean King has not been doing anything white since he's about 16. He's black. Sean King is black. Kamala Harris is white. I mean, if you marry a black woman, you have black kids, you don't say one white word. Like, I, 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 when people learn French, I'm from Montreal, so it's very bilingual, and some people learn French, and then they, they, they grow up with French, and then they marry a French woman, and they're talking with their French kids, and then they start dreaming in French, and they're counting, like, 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, blah, blah, blah. Um, they become French. And I think Sean King dreams in black. Like, yo, motherfucker, why you got to have four horses flying in the sky eating up all the bubble gum that we just created? We're trying to have a, a giant wall of bubble gum here so we can protect ourselves from the rayon beams. Motherfucker, 
You got these horses eating our bubble gum, bitch. Or when he's in a car and there's almost a crash, does he go, God damn it! Holy shit! That guy came out of nowhere. I mean, yo, what the fuck, motherfucker? I think Sean King, if you almost hit him with your car by accident, he go, Jeez, what the fuck, motherfucker? You crazy bitch! He made himself black. I don't think Rachel Dolezal accomplished that. Sean dreams in black. He counts black. Yo, motherfucking 10, 20, fucking on some 30 shit, motherfucking 40. Four, I just drank a 40 the other day. Motherfucking 50, 60 shit. Oh, fucker, who gives a shit, man? It's money, dog. He's a black man. Who's blacker, Sean King or Obama? Who knows more about black culture, rap? Who plays better basketball? Who knows more about collard greens and grits? Sean King. I used to, I'm, I'm fascinated by this guy. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had him as a regular on the show when he was always coming in? And we're like, you you grew up white, right? Yo, I don't want to get into that shit because it like it desecrates what my who my mom's was sleeping with and shit. But uh, can we pull him up? I want to hear his fucking accent. He's got to keep his shit short because if he grows out his mustache, it's this. Wait, his brother is a clone of me. If his if his brother walked in here to take over Anthony's show because Anthony's sick. You guys would not even blink. You'd be like, this guy, Gavin's not very funny today. And he seems a little chubby. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, social media is weird like that because it <laughs> kind of reduces us to little sound bites and tweets. And reduces we're us. all way more nuanced and complicated than our best Instagram right. posts. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up in rural Kentucky and we're all about the same age. And so I grew up in the 80s in a small town right outside of Lexington. Lexington. I grew, grew up a huge basketball fan, big UK fan. Hold on a fan. sec, you had no choice. But no one picked on you because you were white back then. You see, I hate when they retrofit it. Like I saw this interview with um, one of those trannies, Janet something, Mock, something like that. And she was talking to that woman who remember that comedian who did the the white guy blues? He's like, I got them white boy blues. He was a comedian, a New York comedian, and then he got canceled for sexual harassment. He wanted to come on the Gavin McKinnis show and chill because he had been canceled. But no, sorry, dude. Um, he was a big. Remember they called Deep his fried man. No, they called his his wife the leprechaun. Mike Redbar was really uh, Jamie Kilstein. Yeah, that's it, Jamie Kilstein. So Jamie Kilstein was on her show, which was on NBC, and then she had Janet Mock on, or whatever that other bitch's name was. Not Laverne Cox, but one of the yeah. Janet Mock is uh yeah one of the first. She was like the first. Uh, it says she's a activist, transgender activist, and a writer. Yeah. Oh, okay. So she was on, and they were both talking about growing up black. And she was like, yeah, I remember that shit, you know, trying to straighten your hair and shit and smuggling, smuggling the color purple out of the library. And you're like, one of you did that. The other didn't do that. The other was a dude who didn't go to the library and didn't smuggle the color purple. So also really quick, the library's free. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really get that part. I think it was the stigma of liking the color purple. I don't know. There we go. What a mess. Is that in crowd? And those people eat their own. I, I bet he's innocent, too. I bet the hitting on was like, you're really pretty. We had him on uh, Gum Friday. He completely changed my mind about him. He was totally cool and... Kind of got fucked over like a lot of people. Yes, Garrett, but he was a fucker over her. Oh. So sorry. Live by the yeah, sword. Yeah, I forget about that sword, stuff. Bitch. Yeah, you can't. Sorry, Jamie. Yeah. You, like, I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people should be canceled. Chrissy Teigen was just saying rude shit to, on her DMs. Okay. But fucking cancel her because she's part of that culture. So they, I want them to experience it.
But anyway, let's get back to Sean King there. So my, like, I honestly accept at this point that today he's black. And I'll, I'll let him be black from, like, probably 17 on. I'll let him be black. He's blacker than Kamala Harris and Obama. But you, know, you can't talk about being an eight-year-old and getting bullied and people calling you the N-word when you had blonde, blonde, little straight hair. I want him to get arrested so he goes to jail and they can't cut his mustache and he grows like this. What the fuck's he going to do? Yo, I guess I'm just like a, a one of them blonde niggas. Uh, see if you can find his brother, Sean King's brother. Do you know the names of his kids? I could guess. Uh, Shaniqua, Rashawn, Quasnella, Close, Tayana, <laughs> Kendi, Ken. Ezekiel, and Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. If you locked me in a jail cell and said you can't come out till you name Sean King's kids, I feel like I would maybe do three days. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be. I need four pencils. I go through a lot of paper. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like I could get those. The biblical thing with Ezekiel, Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, they love that place. No, the Savannah in Africa. Oh, right. Of course. Yeah. Africa would have been on the list. That's a little too on the nose, though. I I met a wigger in the South in Alabama. No, no, no. South Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina. And he named his white daughter Nevaeh, which is heaven in reverse. They love, that's a very black thing. And he was such a wig that uh, he didn't like rap because it's bad for our community. And he dressed nice, like he wore a dress shirt and stuff. So he was like a black, almost conservative. Like he went to his black church and his white daughter was named Nevaeh. And he, him and his black friend, they had adopted his black friend's niece who was black. So it was, he basically had two daughters and a, another dad, even though he wasn't gay. And they were just buddies who were raising these two girls. And he was like, yo, basically the problem with rap music is it's just like disrespectful and shit. We need to get to a point. In our, and I'm like, dude, stop. Although now with my new mentality, I'm like, dude, black power, you're on board. All right, sorry. Let's get back to Sean King. In the UK, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, there were some Louisville fans, you know, around, right. but... Um, Did you? No, not at all, man. No, <laughs> not... I can't even play a game of horse. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, because you're um, white. So I grew up... You were man, white. It, when I think about the way I came up, you know, I, my mother was a single parent, hardworking, <laughs> working class white woman who worked in a local factory there in the town. And I was a product of an interracial relationship no, you weren't. And in this town, like, that was unheard of. No. Yeah, like, I'm born in 1979, and in the 80s, growing up, looking the way I looked what, what that from, scars the, from the from? relationship I came from. He probably fell on a sewing weird. machine. Like, this was before being mixed or biracial. I didn't even have that language. Right. Like, this was before any of that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you didn't have that language because you were not biracial. <laughs> Look town up his, I grew up in. See if you can find his brother. I never looking even that up? saw myself as mixed or multiracial. I was black. Like that's. If you what grew age, up in this that town. Interesting. What age did you realize you're a black man? Because I'm similar. I'm Italian and black, but I knew at 17 from a particular instance. That's not that biracial like, at all. What? Not at all. Here's man. I have a book that comes out in April, and I tell this whole story. So. In my house, my mother in my never house. talked to me about race. And I try to tell people, like, in a white house. Yeah, you live in rural Kentucky and you're white. Why like would race a be a very thing? Very low racial IQ. Like, my mom wasn't trying to school me on race or racism. So I was in second grade when two young black girls in the school who were friends of mine for life came up to me and asked me if I was mixed. And I remember. Like God, I've played it up. cool my whole life, but I remember being pull so pull up his brother and then we'll drop Talcum like, oh. X. I think the scar is from a traffic accident. Yeah, exactly. Every man wants a, a scar. Every, every man wants a scar that goes like this, and then a, a dead eye that has an eye patch. But the scar has to be from a gang thing. I saw a woman on the train on the way here, a black woman, and she had a weird, gross dead eye, and I thought. Every time I see a man with a dead eye, I'm like, why don't you have a fucking eye patch, dude? You're lucky that you have a dead eye. But then with a woman, she can't have an eye patch. 
woman can't be a pirate. So what should she do? She's fucked. Kill yourself. There we go. There's me and Sean King. So his argument is that's a brother from another mother, which is just a lie. So he definitely called his mom and he said, look, the cat's creeping out of the bag. Um, I need to say that you fucked a black dude. I know that's kind of weird, but uh, it's my entire career, my family, my identity, my brand. And she was like, oh, God, Sean, what are you doing? Why do you have to make your career my personal life? Mom, I'll pay you $10,000. No, you don't have to give me money, Sean, for fuck's sakes. All right, fine. You know what? I'm not going to say that your dad is black, but I will not answer calls. How's that? Yo, that's dope. Stop talking like that when you talk to me. You're still my little Shawnee.